Hello everyone, welcome to the 10th tutorial in Salesforce integration tutorial series of SFDC Stop. So in this tutorial, we are going to perform a SOAP callout to a web service, which is a free web service known as um, Calculator Web Service from dneonline.com. So you can read about the web service here. However, our main thing of interest is the service description. So the service description is nothing but the XML file or we can say that the WSDL file that we need to consume in our Salesforce org because SOAP web services mainly uh, you can say communicate using the WSDL file that are available. So this is the WSDL file of this web service in which all the endpoints and you can say the functions are defined so that we can call this web service from Salesforce or from any other system. So basically this web service mainly consists of four functions. One is the add, one is divide, one is multiply and one is subtract. So this is a very basic uh, calculator web service which allows you to perform some of the basic calculator operations um, by performing a callout, uh, a SOAP callout to this particular API. So let's begin. Uh, first of all, what we need to do, we need to go to dneonline.com slash calculator.asmx. We need to click on the service description and we need to save this WSDL file somewhere. So I'm going to just press Control plus S or you can say Command plus S in Mac and I can save the calculator.xml file in my system. So once this file is saved, you can see here that uh, um, if I quickly open this calculator.xml, um i have that file here so you can see here that uh, this is the wsgl file that i need to import into salesforce right so let's move on to salesforce and let's try to import this file so what you need to do you need to just go to setup by using the settings icon and then setup and then you need to search for apex classes and uh, then you need to click on the apex classes and you will finally find um, a page where you can import your WSDL file. So you can see here a button which is uh, saying generate from WSDL. You need to click on this and you will have a page where it will allow you to upload a WSDL file. So I'm quickly going to choose my WSDL file. It's in SFDC stop and calculator.xml and I'm going to click on pass WSDL. So it will pass the WSDL and your file will be uploaded. But as you can see here, I mean, this is the most common error that you can face when you are up trying to upload a WSDL file, which says failed to pass WSDL, found more than one WSDL binding and WSDL with multiple bindings are not supported. So this is the main issue with Salesforce that WSDL with multiple bindings are not supported. So now I'm going to show you how you can edit this WSDL file to make it uh, something like which can be supported by Salesforce. So when I had a look at my WSDL, I got to know that, uh, I mean, if I search for binding here, so I can see here that uh, one WSDL finding, uh, binding is here with the name calculator soap and uh, another WSDL binding is here with the name calculator soap 12. So what we need to do, we need to remove one of the binding from these two bindings. Like uh, Salesforce already told us that one of the only single binding is supported in case of performing a SOAP callout. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this uh, second binding. Also, I'm going to remove the reference of the second binding from here. And uh, I think there's one more reference of this uh, calculator SOAP binding above in the definition. So I'm going to remove that reference too. So in the calculator.xml, uh, yeah, this is the third reference which says SOAP 12 because I have already a reference to my initial binding. So I'm going to remove the SOAP 12 reference from here also. So here you can see that uh, I have already removed all the references of the second binding and uh, rest all the references are already there. So there's no further reference that I need to remove. The initial binding reference is already there, which is ending with SOAP and note with SOAP 12. Uh, let's see if we have any other binding reference left. No. So I'm going to save this calculator.xml and I'm trying, I'll try to import this WSDL again into Salesforce. So I just need to double click on calculator.xml and I need to click on pass WSDL. So you can see here that now the Salesforce is able to pass the WSDL file successfully. 
so what we did is just that we removed one of the bindings so as you can see here in our code we saw that we had two bindings one with the name calculator soap and one with the name calculator soap 12 so first of all i removed this calculator soap 12 binding uh, from from my code and then i removed all the binding references like uh, one of the binding reference was there uh, with the port uh, that is there was a second port for a second binding and then i removed i should have removed this uh, reference also i think i forgot to remove this reference uh, it's xmlns colon soap 12 okay i already removed this reference also it was there in the header uh, in the wsdl definitions so this reference was there in the top line which i removed and uh, after that i think there is no reference left so our final wsdl file will look something like this that i uploaded in salesforce and i was able to pass that wsdl after that i need to uh, tell the salesforce the apex class name uh, which i am going to use whenever i'm going to perform a soap call out so let's say our apex class name is calculator service final instead of calculator service or i can also say that calculator service one and I'm going to click on generate apex code. So it will automatically create an apex class with the name calculator service one as it is showing here. And it has also created one more apex class named as async calculator service one. Uh, just in case I want to perform an asynchronous request. So in my apex classes calculator service one is there and, uh, and uh, async calculator service one is also there. Um, yeah it's here so we can use these classes to perform a soap call out to our web service but uh, before that we need to check out that we have created a remote site setting for this particular url so you just need to search for remote site setting in your setup um, just search for remote so you just need to search for remote site settings and click on this and uh, i mean here you just add the urls of the endpoints that you are going to hit from salesforce because salesforce should know that you are going to hit this endpoint otherwise you can find an error um, like this just let me show you otherwise you can find some error like this which will say which will show you that unauthorized endpoint please check set up security remote site settings and then add this url to the remote site settings so i think i have already created a remote site setting uh, for my dne online url so yeah it's there with the name calculator wsdl i have added a remote site url which is dneonline.com because uh, my web service is present on this url and it's active so i can easily perform a call out so in order to perform a call out what i'm going to do i'm going to open my developer console real quickly and uh, i'm going to copy and paste the code snippet that is going to perform a call out so this is the code snippet that i am taking from the blog and uh, i'm going to perform a call out using this code snippet so all you need to do is to open your anonymous window uh, just give me a second okay so this is the anonymous window that i have opened and i'm going to paste my code here so what i'm going to do I'm going to call my calculator service class from which was automatically generated from this anonymous window. So if you remember our class name was calculator service one. So this is the class that I'm calling from anonymous window and uh, I have created an object of this class uh, of the inner class of calculator service one. So let's have a look at this calculator service one first. So if I'm opening this class really quickly. So this is the calculator service one class which is present in my org and uh, this class has an inner class named as calculator soap so let's see if we have an inner class so yeah we have an inner class named as calculator soap which is going to call the endpoint dneonline.com slash calculator dot asmx where our web service is present right so um this is the calculator soap class which is performing the operations and it has four methods defined inside it one is the divide method in which you can give two integers and it will divide and perform the division operation through a call out one is the add method uh, one is the multiply method and one is the subtract method so this is the operation that it is performing so what you need to do you need to just to make an object of this inner class where all the methods are there and uh, I'm taking two integer variables, one is six and one is three. And I'm actually performing uh, four operations 
uh, one is a subtract operation add operation multiply operation and divide operation that are available in my uh, api so i'm going to add these two numbers six and three and and i'm going to show the result by using system.debug i'm going to subtract these two numbers i'm going to multiply these two numbers i'm going to divide these two numbers and if you see the uh, if you see the implementation of these methods, you can see here that in case of subtraction, it is not actually subtracting the numbers. It is actually preparing a request and uh, it is actually uh, performing a web service call out using, using the endpoint and the information that we have given because uh, the request uh, variable is actually having both the integers. As you can see here, int a and int b both are in the request uh, subtract element wrapper so i'm passing this wrapper while performing a call out uh, to the endpoint and i'm getting the response and this response is actually stored in response map x and this response is returned to you uh, so this uh, result wrapper is returned to you from the response map so i'm getting the result wrapper and i'm actually just debugging the result wrapper uh, which is there and which i have received from my uh, call out so this result wrapper and if i see the response x dot subtract result it is nothing but a single integer let's let me show you that uh, if i quickly see the response x so response x is nothing but a but an object of subtract response element class which is the inner class so subtract response response element so this is the inner class which is present in my yeah so in this class i have an integer named as subtract result which i am returning in the response so if you can see here in the subtract method it is returning an integer which is the result of the subtraction and this integer i am getting from the response by using response x dot subtract result and then this response x is actually an object of the subtract response element wrapper which has an integer subtract result which is the result from the api callout so this is how i mean i am this these methods are already defined we don't need to get into deep however we are getting the result from the methods that are inside my inner class so this class is responsible for returning the operations that are performed by the api callouts and we are giving the inputs uh, as a parameter to these methods so i'm going to uh, just select this whole code and i'm going to perform an api callout and see what is there in the response so as you can see that our api callout was performed successfully and i got a response so the response is 6 plus c is equal to 9 which is correct 6 minus c is equal to 3 which is again correct 6 into 3 is equal to 18 and 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2 so this is how i mean it actually performed an api callout you can if you check out the debug logs very carefully you will get to know that it actually performed an api callout it uh, to the end point it actually got a response from there and uh, it is actually showing you the response uh, here as shown so whenever you call a method from the inner class it is actually performing a call out by giving the input that you uh, pass into these methods as parameters and it is getting the response and those response uh, i have debugged uh, using system.debug so you can just i mean this is how easy it's to perform an api call out whenever you are going to perform a soap call out from salesforce because uh, we have a great tool named as uh, WSDL to Apex, which uh, generate Apex classes uh, using the WSDL, which is uh, which you got from the third party. So the third party is actually responsible for providing you the WSDL, and you can uh, directly generate your Apex classes from WSDL. You just need to specify them one thing that uh, it should not contain multiple bindings. Otherwise, you have to pass those WSDL uh, on your own and remove the multiple bindings and check. So in case you see an error like system dot callout exception input contain no data please try executing it again because i mean i i just got this error once i was i was trying to perform a call out but when i uh, i mean when i tried again performing a call out it actually worked fine so i don't know uh, actually why i got this error but in case you get this just try try once more and uh, i think it will be fine okay so this is how you can perform a soap call out uh, uh, from salesforce and uh, this is how easy you can directly create a an instance of the inner class which is already available and you can just upload your wsdl and use your soap api directly but but make sure that you create a remote site setting so that uh, salesforce is allowed to reach out to that server 
okay so that's all for this tutorial everyone uh, let's move on to the next tutorial uh, which will be related to i think the test class or so pay call out or something else uh, if you want to see the code you can directly go to the github repository and the branch i think i should have a link at the end of this blog uh, okay i'll add a link it's not there so you can go to github.com slash rahul malhotra slash you should go to sfdc integration tutorial so this is the repository and you can go to the soap callout branch and you can see the callout classes there so here i have the calculator service class as well as the async calculator service class that i used in the tutorial so you can find the whole class here and all the code related to this however i'll be adding a link to the blog in the video description so you can find everything uh, in the blog itself thank you for watching bye bye